you so much for having me. I'm going to go straight to introductions and tell you a little bit about who I am because uh, most likely none of you know me. I am a uh, researcher by trade. I came out of uh, 10 to 11 years at the bench and with uh, one single tweet, I was convinced to actually join the private sector instead. So I now work for Papers and Papers is a uh, reference management tool that goes beyond just reference management. We make a beautiful application for Mac, Windows and iOS and also online at this point, um, and we help researchers be productive. So we help with discovery, with a federated search tool we have built in, we help them organize their work, we help them with reading and annotation, collaboration and sharing. But I'm not actually here to talk about papers, I just want you to know where I come from. I'd actually like to talk to you about some challenges in the library. And the reason for the topic of this talk is I think the obvious, I'm talking to librarians, uh, secondly, I have been talking to librarians a lot in my role as uh, head of outreach for papers in the past couple of years. So I've heard a lot of talk about what is going on um, in your industry and uh, the, the issues that you're facing. And I want to combine that a little bit with some of, the, some of the observations we're making and some of the reasons why papers even exist. And that is because workflows are changing. The way that people create a paper now or the way that we do research now it's completely different from even 10 years ago, from 20 years ago, forget 100 years ago. Uh, having said that, the way in which we communicate that research is still largely, uh, at least the core of it is largely the same, and that's through publications. But also libraries are changing. This is close to where we're at now. This is in San Antonio, Texas, and it's the first library without any books. Everything's digital. Now, should we, with that in mind, be afraid of absolutely everything just being online and nothing uh, being on the shelves anymore? Should we be afraid of this? I don't think so. I don't think it'll ever go to this point. I still love physical books. I like opening a book, taking it into the bathtub and you know, reading it or taking it on the plane. Um, but as a librarian, what I've heard from a lot of your colleagues is that you're starting to feel perhaps a little bit invisible or having some challenges with actually talking to your patrons if they're not physically coming into the library. How do you connect with them? And so that's something that I'd like to address and I want to give you a little bit of feedback coming from my experience uh, with this. There is a, a couple of different ways in which uh, a lot of you are already starting to communicate with patrons. That's different from how it used to be. Uh, it used to be that people come into a library in person and talk to you. Now we actually have to go out and talk to others through different means. And some of those means are blogs, social media, and of course also still workshops. But I should emphasize from this list, workshops is the only face-to-face -face mechanism by which you might be meeting people. Um, and you might be advertising these workshops through social media or trying to get the word out in different ways. Uh, what I've also seen is that these workshops can be really poorly attended when we're not getting the word out effectively and really how do we reach the people that we should be talking to. Uh, it all comes back down to promoting yourself and promoting the researchers that you're supporting. And one thing to keep in mind is what do researchers need? Well, they have a pressure to publish. So everything um, in their life revolves around their work and around the goal to get more publications out. And uh, this is just a, a little funny cartoon, so it's in fact so, so famous that it's everywhere. Um, the concept of the you know, publisher parish. Uh, but if, they, if they're not coming to you because they're so busy with their lab work and they're so involved in being in that environment and are not really physically going to the library again because they think everything is online, then maybe you need to try to connect with them. And I know that I'm probably preaching to the choir. You're all already doing this, and that's great. I'm with this talk trying to encourage you to keep doing it and to keep doing more of it. Now, I am seeing some mixed results. Uh, I think Facebook pages, um, I would do a show of hands, but because I'm limited to five minutes, you can talk to me afterwards. Uh, from what I see, Facebook pages are a bit unsuccessful. Um, this is an example of the University of Toronto Music Library. I went to U of T, so that's why I picked it. Not the music school, though. Um, and they only have 278 likes, a bit disappointing. Then again, Twitter seems to do better. This is an example for uh, Harvard in the library. It's 17,000 followers, a little bit better than, uh, than the previous example. Now, a lot of librarians, a lot of your colleagues are on the right path and doing amazing things on Twitter. Here is a few examples of some individuals who have thousands of followers uh, who are making great impacts, and I just wanted to use that as inspiration to encourage you to do the same. I'd like to encourage you to keep the conversation going. Um, there's uh, different resources, there's different Twitter chats by which you can engage with researchers about the topics that concern them. So these are not library topics, these are topics that they're worried about. And staying on top of the research being published in your university. Um, there are many tools for this, one of them is papers. 
and been tweeting about it, and I'm going to speed up tremendously because I got the one minute mark a little while ago. Uh, and one of the many reasons why researchers should be talking to you, in my opinion, is because you offer insights beyond the search results. Um, this is again a view of uh, Papers Online, which is our new service that allows you to share uh, collections, to share a list of metadata resources, even with people who don't use papers, so if you're interested. Keep the conversation going. Talk to us at our booth. We do have one tonight. We're sharing it with Biomed Central, uh, who's a partner of ours, and uh, tweet with us. And um, there's a few other ways in which we can work together that I'd be happy to talk to you about. In the meantime, thank you very much. Thank you.